Hey, welcome everyone to the Language of Impact online workshop with Infopreneur Agency and featuring Heidi Roberts and Joel Roberts and Associates. And today's, today's webinar is going to be focused on helping you stand out in the loud and crowded marketplace. The, the problem that you have, we all face today, is that it's easier than ever to stand up, but harder than ever to stand out, as Joel says. And the problem that we all face is that there are millions and millions of people all over the world that do what you do, and you, you need to actually stand out and be different in order to attract the clients uh, that you want. So before I get into, before we introduce the guests, I wanna introduce, uh, so Joel Roberts, in case you don't know, uh, he is a KABC primetime radio talk show host. He's been doing that for 20 years. And he's an internationally acclaimed message master from coaching over uh, 500,000 entrepreneurs all over the world, uh, Fortune 100 companies like Pfizer, uh, Lockheed Martin, and Target, as well as hundreds of uh, best-selling authors like Jack Canfield, Stephen Covey, and Marshy uh, Shimoff. And now, he, now he's helping all, uh, all kinds of people all over the world uh, discover their singular signatures that differentiate themselves from everyone else in the market and stand out from everyone else so they can capture their best target audience. Now, Heidi Roberts is his lovely wife, and she is also the COO of Joel D. Roberts & Associates. She basically runs everything. Uh, she's also a former television producer for all the major networks and cable television uh, stations. And she's, uh, she has trained thousands of, of entertainment professionals to market themselves and now produces co and co-leads uh, programs with Joel. So she's a, they're a power couple and they're amazing. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute them now and you guys enjoy this. This is gonna be amazing. Make sure you take lots of notes and make sure you participate 100% because this is gonna absolutely change your life and potentially change your entire business, okay? Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Hi there. Okay. Hey. Um, do you want me to angle this a little Just bit like there differently here? Yeah. All right. Let me uh, make sure this is on mute. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. All right. Um, <sighs> Omar. Yes. That was a Welcome very back. nice introduction. And I want to compliment you on using language that I was going to use. <laughs> Thanks. So um, what Omar said is true. I'm just going to play around with the screen here for a little bit. So I can have. <clears throat> OK. The challenge is pretty simple. Like Omar said, uh, due to the internet, it is easier than ever to stand up in the communication sphere right now. It is harder than ever to stand out. This is the problem. The barriers to entry are lower than ever. That's really good news. The barriers to entry are lower than ever. The barriers to excellence are higher than ever. And this is the challenge. So the question is, how do you stand out? Uh, as some of you know, I am the former, for six and a half years, media coach to the best selling literary franchise in American history called Chicken Soup for the Soul. Anybody here heard of Chicken Soup for the Soul? Raise your hand. Great. So that was my client or until they were sold to another publisher. And I worked with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I mean, to the point that I used to say to my lovely wife that, frankly, I felt that I was drowning in an immense pot of chicken soup at a certain point. And each one of these volumes contained 105 stories. And each one of the volumes contained four editors. There were Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield, the co-creators of the series who were invariably listed as one of the, or two of the editors. And then there were two others. 
So I would work with the two other editors, and then I would work with a number of the contributors. And as you can imagine, when you have so many stories and only a couple of main editors, those two editors are going to be recounting the same stories. Everybody with me so far? Guess what? If they tell those stories in exactly the same way, we have failed. And this was the challenge. The challenge was everybody needed to sound different, even if they were covering the same material. It is the same for you. Now, I'm sure many of you are doing unique things out there, but the reality is that in the eyes and the ears and the minds of most viewers and listeners, they think they've heard it all before. You have to persuade them otherwise. So our goal in the quick 60 minutes we're going to spend together today is to show you how to stand out. And I need to precede that with one caveat. I need to make very clear that I can't show any one of you all I would like to show you about how to stand out. It takes us a couple of days to impart those principles to people. But I can show you something that will be of use to you, and that would be of use to the rest of the group. Everybody with me? Okay, so a couple of principles. Number one, in a unique selling proposition, a so-called USP, you, Y-O-U, have to be part of the USP. This is absolutely essential. How many of you have heard the expression, I'm a speaker and a trainer and a coach? Raise your hand. Okay, I wanna give you a little hint. If you say to me that you're a speaker and a trainer and a coach, I will attempt to crawl through the screen and strangle you. <laughs> Lovingly, of course. Lovingly, of course. But I am so damn tired of hearing from people that they are a speaker and a trainer and a coach. I need to hear something more specific than that. I need you, the reality <laughs> of your mind, the reality of your heart, I need to get to the heart, not only of your message, but to the heart of the one who speaks it. That would be you. This is critical. For those of you that were on the call last time, you may have heard that I have had the privilege of being the communications consultant to what is arguably the biggest story in the world right now in terms of the number of hits it's getting everywhere front page New York Times, front page Washington Post, ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, Fox, BBC, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For those of you that were not on the call, I am referring to the story that broke on the front page of the New York Times three weeks ago to the effect that the Pentagon, the Department of Defense of the United States of America, had a secret office looking into UFOs for a number of years. This was radical. One of my clients in this equation is the guy who ran that office. He is a former intelligence operative. He was a combat soldier in Iraq and Afghanistan. He not only ran the UFO office, how many of you have heard of the prison at Guantanamo Bay? He ran that too. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy who is as high as it gets that the United States government trusted with some incredibly important tasks. He ran the secret office at the Pentagon looking into UFOs. And I'll wrap up on this quick little diversion, but for those of you that haven't seen the article, when we're done, go to just Google New York Times UFOs and you will see right in the article video that American fighter pilots have taken of aircraft moving through the air and no one can identify what they are. The fighter pilots can't identify them, the radar operators can't identify them, the air traffic controllers can't identify them, they're a mystery. So these people are my clients. Now, 
do you think that it's easy for a former combat soldier who ran Guantanamo Bay and ran a secret office, do you think it's easy for him to share his heart? Probably not. Probably not. And yet he has to. Now, presumably, if you are not all career intelligence officers, it might be a little bit easier for you. That balance between heart and mind is another thing we're going to be looking at today. When we teach our two-day seminar, are we on? Brendan, oh. you, you shared your screen. Can you stop doing that, please? Oh, sorry. Okay. Let me turn down. Okay. All right, we're good. Go ahead. How did I accidentally <laughs> share Brendan's screen? Your screen. Anyway. I am not Brendan. Okay. I just want to stipulate for the record, I don't know who Brendan is. I am not now, nor have I ever been Brendan. <laughs> I am certain that whoever Brendan is, he's got to be taller than I am. <laughs> Sorry about that. Can I have my water bottle yes. over there? Thank you very much. That one, yeah. My cyclist's water bottle. I'm an avid cyclist, so here is my... <laughs> heart, head, and the balance between the two of them. A unique signature in the marketplace. I can't tell you everything today that you need to know about that, but by God, I can demonstrate some of it. So let's do that. I want to work with you people, and I want to hear your stories, and then I'm going to reframe those stories in a way that would have grabbed my audience on KABC Talk Radio in Los Angeles where I come from. So, first up, Mr. Patrick Wu. Yes, yes. <laughs> hello, hello, Joel. Hello, Patrick. Now, is your thing wooing women? Uh, you are quite accurate on that, yes. Well, I guess you were born with the right last name. Yeah, I guess uh, I was a little fortunate on that one. Tell me what you do. Well, I help men find the confidence that they've been looking for their entire lives so that they can charm whoever they come across so that they can live that oh, romantic. They can, what? they can what? They can what? So they can charm whoever they, whoever they meet. Uh, charm whoever they come across. Yeah, or, uh, or live that romantic life they've always dreamed of or find that one. And all stemming from the fact of finding that, that feeling, that confident feeling they've been, they've been dying to search for their entire lives. Do me one moment. Do me a favor. This is too low for me, but you like it at this height. So I need to lean on something here. Um, this is a little better. All right, Patrick. Are you all ready to have your socks knocked off? Uh, well, my socks are already off, but uh, you'll probably knock me off, though. <laughs> so just to repeat, you want to make men more confident. You want to help them charm whoever they come across. You want them to enhance their romantic lives and possibly find the one. Is that accurate? That's very accurate. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little about yourself. Yeah, well, I was, I was uh, someone who really struggled really, really heavily uh, in, in this topic. And, and I was someone who didn't even know what, uh, like I didn't even have a friend that was a girl until I was like 20 years old. I, I, uh, gradu I, gradu uh, I used to be a recruiter where I used to help people f search for jobs in the recruiting technology world. I also uh, wrote this book called The Art of Wooing. And, and, and uh, I, I guess for me, I, did, I, I was kind of that really naive social late bloomer where I didn't even know what, what sex was until I was 18 years old. So I, I felt like I was- Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just need to digest that for a moment. Um, okay. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Los Angeles. 
can you put some of that in this? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We want some people live on here. Yeah, I will. You grew up in LA? Yes. Is Wu a Chinese name? It is. Are both your parents Chinese? They both are. Were they from China or from the US? From China and Hong Kong. Okay. <laughs> all right. I want to show you all what can be done with even a little bit of information like that. Number one, Patrick. And I think what we're going to do is this. Uh, Omar, let's unmute a couple of people uh, at random that you think will have a good audio connection. Maybe about five or six, Omar. Yes. Okay, Zaza, hopefully that's okay. Uh, all right, doctor, don't let any calls come in, please. Okay. Okay, so Patrick, you didn't know what sex was until you were 18? <laughs> yeah. Right, and that was intellectual knowledge or was that your first experience of it? Intellectual knowledge. And your first experience of it? Uh, 20, 23. Hey Patrick, do you have a girlfriend or wife now? I just lost my girlfriend recently. My suggestion will be to leave out that statistic. <laughs> Who's unmuted, Omar? You can tell. Anybody? Sasha, Anze, Isabel, Mike Hayes, Melody, uh, Roberts. Anyone who doesn't have a cross through the mic. Okay. Isabel, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Joe. Hi, how are you? Where are you from? I'm half French, half Swedish, and uh, a little bit American, and a little bit Mauritian. Where do you? Where are you? Where are you now? I'm in, in France. So, uh, do you French think you know something about romance? <laughs> well, some French do. And do they? In your opinion? Yeah, some do. But there is some nice assholes around as, as well, so. All right. Excuse my language. Excuse How, my French. For fun, <laughs> for fun, let's take a little survey. How many of you, by a show of hands, regard France as a country that is sort of famous for romance? <laughs> Great. How okay. many of you regard China as a country that's famous for romance? <laughs> Okay, Patrick, you think that's worth using? I think it's uh, very good for using. Right, so what is the country with the largest population on earth? I'm guessing China, final answer. <laughs> right, so on the one hand we have China with the largest population on earth, right? Yes. And on the other hand, they're about as unfamous for romance as you can get, right? Yeah. So the question is, how in the hell are they reproducing? <laughs> That's a really good question. Now, give me a clock here, a little stopwatch here. One moment. So if you went on, I'm just getting warmed up here, but I'm having a little fun. <laughs> if you went on here, where's my, there it is. Okay. If you went on to my old station, KBC Radio, and said, I'm Patrick Wu, I am of Chinese ancestry on both sides. Both my parents were born in China, Taiwan, 
And uh, I think we all have to admit that maybe Chinese are not, you know, they're not like the French, they're not like the Italians, they're not necessarily known for being the most romantic culture in the world. On the other hand, I should point out that they do have the world's largest population. Um, how do you think they produce those kids? Stop. You, you own the audience. I mean, those Chinese are having a lot of sex, right? <laughs> Somebody somewhere is screwing their brains out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. True or true? True. Next, next, next. Let me have an American female. How about Sherry? Can you unmute yourself? Sure. <laughs> Are you an American female? Uh, last time I checked, I was. Okay. I, I will not... Check any further. <laughs> Sherry, what, th this, this one question is going to change you people, your, your lives. I'm serious. So pay attention. Sherry, what has been going on in American culture lately it is the biggest story about the relationship between men and women to come along since God knows when. The sexual harassment? Amen. Now, at the very least, can we say that sexual harassment is a really great example of men getting it wrong? Jerry? Yes. Right. Everybody understand? Sexual harassment is a great example of men getting it wrong. Everybody with me? Yes. There are editorials by the dozens and dozens and dozens, written mostly by women, about the plague that sexual harassment has been and what's going to need to happen to get it right. Now, Sherry, allow me if I may to ask you a personal question. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to pry, but I'm just gonna ask you a personal question if I may. Sure. <laughs> so, are you married or is there a man in your life or? Yes. Which? Married. Okay, great. To a man? Yes. Okay. So you're not anti-men. No. But I would assume you're anti-harassment. <sighs> yes. Right. Okay. Do we in our culture now have a hunger to understand how to navigate this delicate terrain, this energy between men and women in a way that works for both. Are we involved in that inquiry? Uh, I think we're trying to be. We yeah. should. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. Patrick. Ready, hold on. I'm holding on to my chair. <laughs> okay. I'm now going to open Patrick's interview. I'm going to do both parts. All right. I'm going to be Joel. I'm going to be Patrick. Ready? Yes. Everybody ready? Yes. Nod your head. This is 790 KBC Talk Radio Los Angeles. I'm Joel Robert with Patrick Wu who has written a book called The Art of Wooing, all pun intended. Patrick, welcome. Thank you very much. Now, why'd you write this book? Well, Joel, because men are blowing it. How do we know they're blowing it? The plague of sexual harassment. If you saw the golden gloves, the golds the other night, it really is a plague. And I'll tell you what, men and women need to learn how to better navigate the relationship and the energy between them. Interesting, Patrick. Patrick, let me ask you something. Are you Chinese? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And hey, we're not exactly famous for being the most romantic culture in the world, are we? I mean, like, we're not the Italians, we're not the French, right? Thank you for saying that, Patrick. I mean, I really didn't want to insult you, but yes. Well, Joel, allow me to point something out. 
1.4 billion human beings later, somebody somewhere there must be having sex. Gosh, you know, you're right. So I'll tell you what, man, maybe we know more than you give us credit for. Not that I always did. I didn't. I didn't know about sex till I was 18. I didn't have it till some years later. In fact, I was an IT guy. I was a recruiter in the technology field. What I want to offer men now is that technology of how, for lack of a better word, to recruit women to you. Ready? Pause. That's dead on a minute and 30, including all of my questions. Everybody understand what I just did? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's all right out of Patrick's life. And it's out of what's going on in the world. And it took a minute and a half, which ain't much time, and included the broadcaster's questions. And now we have Patrick, who shows up as a unique guy with a sense of humor, who uses his ethnic background and the stereotypes about it to his advantage, who makes a joke about the fact that probably nobody looks to Hong Kong, you know, when it comes, or Beijing, when it comes to sex symbols on the covers of American magazines. No offense intended. They don't look at short Jewish guys with bald spots either. So I just, <laughs> okay, all right. We're sexy in a different kind of way. <laughs> but does everybody understand what just got achieved in 90 seconds? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. 100%. Yes. 100%. I simply looked at what was going on in the world today, sexual harassment. That's the best example of men getting it wrong you'll ever find. Here's a guy. So, so women listening to this are going to go, hey, this is a guy who gets it. They're driving along in Los Angeles or wherever they are, but I come from L.A. even though we live in Nashville now. They're driving along in, in L.A. and they're on the 405 and there are the 10 and they're saying, hey, that dude gets it. And he's funny and he's willing to make fun of the fact that he's Chinese. <laughs> okay? And he's willing to say, well, I'm not French, I'm not Italian. So, we're using harassment because the best topics are topical. I'll come back to that. The best topics are topical. Well, I'm not going to come back to it. I'm going to address it right now. You have to relate what you do to what's going on in the world. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Yes. To the water cooler conversation, so to speak. So we're using sexual harassment because it is the water cooler conversation. We're using the fact that he's Chinese. And then he says that he used to work as a recruiter in the technology field. And I simply took those words, which come straight out of his heart, his mind, his being. And I said, and here I was a guy who had to wait until late in life to find out what sex was, let alone to have it. And I struggled with it, but I learned. And now the guy who used to recruit people in technology I'm offering a technology to men about how to recruit women. Boom! <laughs> Nobody else sounds like that. Get it? Yes. Get it? Is that cool, Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> That, that's a fraction of what you need to know and you need to do. But it's liftoff. Mm. That was uh, beautiful. Thank you. My obsession, ladies and gentlemen, I'll flip the page to go to the next person. My obsession is with beginning. Because let me share with you a little secret uh, from my years on KBC Radio in Los Angeles. Metaphorically speaking, in the media, if the plane's going to crash, it's going to crash on takeoff. Everybody understand what I just said? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mike Hayes, you understand what I just said? Yes, I'm nodding. Yes. <laughs> right. Metaphorically speaking, if the plane's going to crash, it's going to crash on takeoff. And that's not only true in the media. It's just true, period. 
especially in this world with a short attention span. This is what you've got to have. A beginning that addresses something that people are feeling now. Mm. Mm. And that brings you, your heart, your mind, your background, your story to the show. And I promise you, Patrick, I'll flip back. Number one, you relate what you're doing to sexual harassment, people will listen to you. We got, everybody now in this culture has a PhD in how men are getting it wrong. Just ask Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. He's got a PhD in how to get it wrong. And I say lock him away under seven feet of concrete and serve him a meal once a week. We want to know how to get it right. If I, were, if I were not married to my lovely wife, I'd like to be married to somebody. I'm a heterosexual male with all of my juices flowing, no pun intended. I'm just saying I'm a normal guy. I'm attracted <laughs> to women. A lot of normal guys attracted to women. We want to know how to navigate that. So we use the fact of harassment, we use that you're Chinese, we play with stereotypes, we use your background as a technology recruiter, you're gonna offer men a technology by which to recruit, but you ain't talking employees, you're talking your life partner, bro. <laughs> yeah. All that came from you. Now, Patrick, before I leave you and move on to whoever's next, have you ever done what I just did? Not even close. Thank you. How many, of you. how many of you would like to know the art and science of what I just did? Absolutely. Yep. Sherry. Yes. <laughs> I need to know how to woo Sherry. <laughs> Who's next? It's Patrick's course. Let me have a female. Uh, Female, female, female. Richard Ruling, you're not a female. <laughs> you know, and, and, and in light of the fact that you're a medical doctor, the fact that you have this gender confusion <laughs> is really a little alarming to me and may have to do with some of your exotic religious beliefs, which have interfered with your, you know, okay, who are we? <laughs> what? I, I, you will have to ask what they do. I had all these people on the line who don't have their pictures up. Shy. Chuck, Chuck and Brenda. Anze, how do you pronounce your name? You were right on the money, Joe. So I've already wooed you. Uh. <laughs> you got to think for short Jewish guys, don't you, Anze? Admit it. You know, Joe, when you call me out like that, what do you expect me to say? <laughs> what do you do? You know what I do? I'm a flight attendant by profession. Excuse my voice, I had a little cold. I'm a flight attendant by profession, but I also help um, people to find out how to solve, use their problems to create opportunities for growth and excellence. You help people use their problems to create opportunities for growth and excellence. Is that right? That's correct, yes. Where are you a flight attendant? I am based in Los Angeles and I'm a flight attendant with American Airlines. <clears throat> Where are you from? I'm from Cameroon. It's a very tiny country in the west coast of Africa size of California. It's the size of California and you call it tiny? Well, compared to other countries, it is tiny to us. <laughs> Don't woo me again, Joel. Come on now. I already fell for that. <laughs> Try it. <to take> <laughs> <clears throat> mm. 
you're a flight attendant with American Airlines, you're from Cameroon, which according to your misguided notion is a tiny country off the coast of Africa, the size of California. That's correct. Right. I believe so. <laughs> and and um, you use problems to create opportunities and growth, uh, opportunities for growth and excellence. That's correct, Joel. Uh, the title of my, my book is uh, Rise. It's called Renew Your Spirit of Excellence. That's the next book I'm working on. And I just finished, I published a book in November. It's titled From Struggle to Strength. primarily write books or are you a coach or a speaker or what? Uh, I do write books and uh, yes, I, I am a speaker. I do coaching, but very limited. And uh, I also, I'm creating um, an event for speakers as well, which should be coming up. The first one will be in February okay. with Omar. <laughs> I'm working with Omar. Omar is helping me on that very much. You've got more than one book? Yes, I'm actually working on the next two. I've got okay. two, okay. one I could, yes, I'm working on the next two. I missed the name of the first book that you mentioned. It's right here, Joel. It's titled From Struggle to Strength. No, before that. The, the one that I talked about, it's titled Renew Your Spirit of Excellence. So it's an acronym. It's uh, spelled R-Y-S-E, RISE. So it's renew your, meaning renew your spirit of excellence. <laughs> That's funny. Joel, you wanna know what the title of my next book is? I think you're gonna tell me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to tell me yes first. <laughs> Anze, absolutely yes. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. And you so can the, remember I'm in the room, okay? Just remember I'm in the room. I'm right <laughs> okay. You know, um, I definitely, Joel would not be doing all that without you around there. So that explains the title of my next book, Power of a Female Influence. Power what? of what? The Power of Female Influence. Ah. Now you're <laughs> I never, I don't know why I take notes since I can't read my handwriting anyway. But, um, <clears throat> I got it, I actually can. Okay. The acronym RISE stands for what again? Renew your spirit of excellence. Cameroon is a country. How's the economy doing? economy is not doing very good but good. It, they're trying to improve so good okay are you aware of the fact Anze that as a continent Africa is going through uh, a massive economic transformation as a continent that's correct. And that, and that, in fact, a lot of the stereotypes that we Westerners have about African poverty are no longer really true everywhere. That's very correct as well. Okay. All right. So, renew your... Re Spirit of excellence. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you.
and the people you coach are? The, the people I coach are professionals and uh, business owners, entrepreneurs. Okay. All right. I just want to point something out here. Uh, if you coach business owners and professionals and entrepreneurs, and you are a flight attendant, is that entrepreneurship? As a personally, I don't think so, but I'm willing to hear what your opinion is on that. Mm -hmm. All I'm pointing out to people is that if I were an entrepreneur and somebody who was a flight attendant wanted to teach me about entrepreneurship, I might have some questions and considerations about that. Everybody follow me? That's all I'm saying. Because being a flight attendant sounds very much like a corporate job. You follow what I'm saying, Anse? That's correct. Yes, you're right. Okay. You, you are not primarily teaching entrepreneurship, am I right? This is more motivational, using the problems that come through and turning them to your advantage, learning from them. Am I right about that? That's correct. And I'm, I'm, I'm working on transitioning. And one of the only reasons, I was an entrepreneur before I became a flight attendant. And uh, before I left Cameroon, I'd always wanted to fly. I was taking pilot lessons and I always wanted to fly. And uh, during the recession in, in America, I my business took some turns, but it pretty much um, expanded after some time. And uh, I decided to get on the air because it gives me more time to focus. And also it helps me to travel the world for free. And I go and I speak in Australia, I speak in, in Africa, I speak in Japan, mm -hmm. and it helps me to maximize cost for travel. And Thanks. also I'm able to, to see the world. Right. Renew your spirit of excellence. Okay, ready? Yes, sir. You're on. Hang on. <laughs> While Joe's doing this, everybody, these kinds of questions are what you want to be asking yourself about yourself. You know, what is your background? What, why do you do this? What, what have you done? You know, what are the elements of your life that we can weave into your USP? So it's not just about Ansa now or Patrick. It's about all of you. Now, again, Today, we are in the business of, no pun intended, on so we're in the business of liftoff. You understand? That's correct. Okay. Well, everybody understand that? We are, today, our obsession is with beginning. This is a fraction of what you need to know, but it is something that you totally need to know. Everybody get that? Got it. Understood. Okay. It's not the total of what you need to know, but it is something that you totally need to know. Now, I like the way I put it. Everybody get that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So watch. If you're on KBC Talk Radio, what's your last name? My last name is Mofo. Mofo? Yeah. Yeah, you just called me Mofo, but that's okay. <laughs> your last name is Mofo? M O F O R, Mofo. Oh, okay. I'm glad. It's, it's, translated, it's translated Child of the King in my dialect. <laughs> The, la the last R, the last R is silent in your dialect? Mofor, yes, that's correct. <laughs> I'm going to encourage you very much to pronounce the final R in American contexts. Okay, that's why I use Anze live, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. Because if I'm on KBC Talk Radio and I say, now with us is Anze Mofo. <laughs> Okay, it might have repercussions <laughs> in my audience. Ready? I'm ready, Joe. <laughs> Anze, welcome to I'm playing both parts. Hold on. <laughs> Again, I'm playing both parts. Okay. Welcome to KBC Talk Radio. I'm Joel Roberts. With us is Anze Mofor. She is the author of a book called Renew Your Spirit of Excellence. Welcome, Anze. Thank you very much. Now, what do you do in your day in your day job? I am a flight attendant. Really? Yes, Joel. And as a matter of fact, I want to tell you which airline I'm with because <laughs> it's going to point something out. I am a flight attendant on the most American airline you can think of. It is American Airlines. <laughs> and yet I am here to tell you that I think here in America something very American has been lost. And every now and then you need an outsider to come and tell you what it is that you Americans who were born here have lost. Well, what do you think that is? The spirit of excellence. I think that America is not representing what it used to represent in the world. 
hey, look, it's no accident that the acronym of my book is R-Y-S-E, RISE. I'm a flight attendant, for God's sake. If you look at your country's reputation in the world in the last year or so, I don't think anyone is claiming that it's rising, despite what someone might have claimed he might do. So I'm gonna show, especially women, but men also, how to achieve that most American of American things, entrepreneurship, excellence, and that spirit that you've lost. You ready to rise? Boom, once again, one minute, 20 seconds. Everybody understand what I just did? Perfectly. Now, I can even do it shorter but I want to do it in a way that shows you that you have time to be yourself. Now, what did I use? In fact, what did I forget to use? Cameroon, okay? I can do it again and I may do it again, but I want you to make reference to your accent. Okay. Okay, somebody just said, I think that's a gift. This can't be learned, right? And who said that? Tracy Bonick. She on my, unmute people. Oh, she everybody. on my screen. Tracy, maybe she's on another screen. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. Hi. <laughs> so you think I have a genetic gift that can't be learned, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, everybody want the politically incorrect truth? Tell us. Yes. Unmute everyone for a second. Unmute everyone. Right. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Here, here's, here's the politically incorrect truth. There is some truth to that. I'm <laughs> sure. Here's the other part. I can and I do routinely teach people, Tracy, I'm looking right at you. Okay. To do this in the best way they can. And a lot of it has to do with asking yourself the right principles. And it has to do with really getting the depth of who you are. This is the thing. When I talk about the depth of who you are, I'll tell you what I want to do. Everybody. I'm going to tell you all a little story, if I may. It's a Bible story. I have no religious agenda. I wasn't planning this, but I'm going to do it. Everybody ready for a little story? Yes. 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 Okay. Joel, can yes. you mute everybody again, please? Uh, Omar can. Yeah, I'll do that in one moment. Hold on a sec. Okay, Joel, you're good to go. Story time. Uh, story time. <laughs> Tracy and everybody else, this is, this is a gift to you. I, I'm going to share with you a Bible story. And um, I have no religious agenda whatsoever. None. I have zero religious agenda. I don't know if this is literally true. I don't know if it's literature. I don't care. It's a great story. Everybody with me? Yes. So there's this moment at the end of the Old Testament, and Moses is brought to the edge of the land of Israel, and he is standing on top of, I guess we would call it a cliff, an overlook, and he's looking out over the territories that are now the state of Israel, the ancient home of the Jewish people. And God says to Moses, I have brought you here to see the land that I promised to your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And take it in with your own eyes. I have allowed you to see it with your own eyes, but you shall not go there. And then Moses dies. I don't have the Bible in front of me, although I could probably get it, but it's all right. I've got this pretty much in my heart. Moses dies. 
And it is said in the Bible that although he was 120 years old, when he died, his eyesight had not dimmed and his strength had not lessened. And the people of Israel, the children of Israel, mourned for Moses. They wept for Moses for 30 days. And then Joshua, who was the son of a man named Nun, took over for Moses. And at the end of it, I wish you all knew Hebrew. I could give it to you in the original Hebrew, but I don't know how much that would do for you. I'm going to translate it from the Hebrew into English because I know it in the Hebrew. And there has not risen a prophet like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And the interesting thing about this is God doesn't say where Moses was buried. You really got to get this. He indicates an area, but the Old Testament says, and Moses was buried somewhere in this area, and to this day, no one has seen his grave. Everybody with me? So here we have Moses who's brought to the edge of the promised land. Everybody understand Moses was the lawgiver. Moses was the liberator of his people. Moses was, in our tradition, the greatest that ever lived. And what's the reward that he gets? A, he does not get to go into the promised land. And B, his grave isn't marked. Raise your hand if you think that that's fair. Good. Zero. Raise your hand if you think that not being able to go into the promised land and being the greatest leader of your people and being rewarded with an anonymous grave in the sand someplace, raise you, your hand if you think that kind of sucks. It sucks. It double sucks. Now here's the question. Why? This is a gift to every one of you. A gift, a gift, a gift, a gift, a gift to every one of you, and I want you to accept this gift. Why didn't God mark Moses' grave? I mean, he should have had a shrine. He should have had a monument. He should have had a place of pilgrimage that generations from that point forward would go and visit. Doesn't that make sense? Wouldn't that make sense? Wouldn't it at least make sense for him to have a gravestone, a marker, something? He gets nothing. Sorry, Richard, not this time. Why not? Here's the answer, and here's what it has to do with you. Number one, with regard to the fact that Moses didn't see the promised land, we can assume that if there is a reality to a spiritual existence, that he was duly rewarded in the next dimension. But that's not the main point I'm trying to make. Here's the reason that God did, mark Mo did not mark Moses' grave. Because God knew that if he did mark Moses' grave, the children of Israel, who were still going through a tremendous period of trial and difficulty, would continue to folk on Moses even though he was gone. They would go to his grave site. They would bow down to Moses. They would stay stuck in the past. And in effect, God was saying, Moses was great, but Moses is gone. And Joshua, it's your turn now. It is your turn now. That's what God was saying to Joshua. Omar, I want you to unmute everybody. Somebody's phone is ringing. That's a call from God. <laughs> sure it is, yes. I'm giving you a standing ovation, Joel. <laughs> you all understand that what I'm trying to tell you... I was sitting with... What I'm trying to tell you is 
you all need to ask yourselves for what is it your turn now? Get it? Yes, yes, yes. This is your existential moment. <laughs> this is a beautiful passage of the Old Testament. Moses does not get to the promised land. He'll get his due recompense some other place. God does not mark the grave because people need to go forward. They need to live into the future. Hmm. Wow. And wow. God, in effect, was saying, like I said, Moses was great, but Moses is gone, and Joshua, it's your turn now. Lead. Mm. And every one of you mm. That's it. needs to be in that question. Mm. What is it? To kind of inhale it and be with it and imbibe it and engage it. You need to ask yourselves for what is it my turn now? There is a summons that's been issued. You think I'm just some edgy Los Angeles media guy? Ha! Surprise. I'm a human being with a spiritual side, and I enjoy sharing it with you. You have got to look into the summons that you've been issued. I'm going to close here, and then Heidi is going to talk with you. I'm going to close here with a phrase. A couple of years ago, we had done one of our seminars in Los Angeles. We now do them online, online as my wife is going to share with you. And we do them live interactively like this. They are completely live and interactive. But a couple of years ago, when we had done one in person in LA, we were on the 18th floor of the Los Angeles Airport Marriott. Mm -hmm. We were finished. We were finished. And the, one of the elevators wasn't working. So a, a, a lady on the staff of the Marriott Hotel knew that I had led the seminar. And as a courtesy to me, she did something very nice. And she kind of waved me over to the freight elevator and said, I'll get you down fast. Because we had 130 people who were to get into one elevator. Well, there was a woman from our seminar that snuck into the elevator with me. And I would love to think it was my sex appeal. I would really love to think it was my sex appeal. And we're going down 18 floors and she looks at me and she says, I gotta tell you something. That was an amazing experience. And I said, thank you very much. And she said, you know, to call you, I don't know what the hell you call yourself, a communications coach or whatever, it doesn't really quite capture it. And I said, thank you. And she said, so I'm curious. We're going down on this elevator. And she said, I'm curious. In your mind, what do you call yourself? And I'm sure you've had this experience. Something popped out of my mouth that I had never thought of in my whole life. And I share it with you now. I looked at her and I heard myself say, I am a digger for divine deposits. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're what? I am a digger, one who digs for divine digger. Okay. For, for divine deposits. That's what really motivates me. That's what really animates me. Yeah, I'm an edgy, I'm an edgy New York Jew, even though I'm not from New York, but the rest of it's accurate. <clears throat> I'm a former Los Angeles primetime broadcaster, and yeah, I got high standards. My gift to people, believe it or not, is my standards. I hope that resonates with you. Mm -hmm. 
But when I said to her, I'm a digger for divine deposits, I thought, wow, you know, that, that is it. <laughs> By the way, I will ask you not to write that anywhere. That's, <laughs> that's a phrase that I don't want going around. It's something that I use very selectively, okay? Mm. Everybody with me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But that's what I do. So you all think, well, learn with us and you'll learn how to articulate a selling proposition for the media. Yes. Learn with us and you'll learn that the media paradigm applies to your whole business life. Yes. Learn with us and you'll learn how to sell things. Yes. Is that what fundamentally animates me? No. I already have a 4,500 square foot home and a daughter in private school. I own eight bikes. <laughs> I'm an avid cyclist, not a motorcyclist. Bikes that you pedal. Oh, I am blessed. There's not a lot in the material way that we really want for. I'm not saying I'm the richest guy I know, but I'm saying I'm the poor. <clears throat> Money is not what motivates me. You know what motivates me? Helping somebody find their de divine deposit and giving it a voice, that motivates me. And I gotta tell you something, it's fun. <laughs> it's really fun. <clears throat> In the two people that I work with here, Patrick and Anze, we saw something. We saw just a beginning, but we saw a beginning. We saw the beginning of a signature that will sound like no one else's signature. We saw the beginning of presencing themselves in a way that no one else could do. I leave you with this and then I'm going to turn it over to my wife. She's going to invite you to be with us for an event that we're doing for you people online and it will be interactive. I'm going to invite you, in addition to that, to live with this question. For what is it your turn now? Hmm. This is your moment. If, if a summons is being issued toward you, what is it? My last thought is this. If somebody is issuing a summons toward you, answer it. God bless you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. God bless you, too. Joe's giving us the innovations. Don't go away. But... <laughs> He's good. I leave you with my wife, <laughs> but but only virtually. <laughs> well, I just want to say something about what Joel just said. Uh, if you hear that summons, if you are up to something big, if you've got a mission in the world and it matters, or a business that you care about, if you've got a baby that you want to bring forth, or you already have brought it forth and you want more, you want bigger, you want to reach more people with it, the most important thing you can do is to get your message right. It's number one above everything else. It's great to have a website, it's great to spend money on marketing, it's great to learn all the other tools and tricks, but if the message isn't, <coughs> if you don't know how to say what you do in a way that grabs people, in a way that makes them want to be part of this, then it all kind of goes down the drain. Do you know what I mean? If, you, if you're not aligned and laser focused mm -hmm. and able to articulate this in a way that people will respond to, that has impact, or not. So the most important thing is the work that we're doing here. And it's connecting up the heart and the soul and your credibility and what you're offering all in one clear, <coughs> like through line. That's what we're doing. <coughs>
So may I just share with you a little bit, if you do want to learn more with Joel, um, what that would look like. Is that all right with you? No, yes, please. Me? Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> someone said that Joel had a unique gift and that this wasn't something that anybody could do. And he really can't teach this. And Joel said, well, he does have a unique gift. And I can tell you, he does. I've been with him for a long time now. And I've uh, co-led seminars with him. And what he does is quite extraordinary. I've never seen anybody do it. And you don't have to do what he does. You don't have to take somebody's message and in three minutes turn it around and make it into something fantastic. That's not your job. That's his job. Your job is to be able to do that for yourself with a lot of practice, with a lot of input, but to be able to get that kind of a transformed message for you is really all you have to do. And we have helped literally almost a half a million people now to do that. We do, we've got it down to a science. And this is, this is some of the things that you will learn if you work with us. And you will be able to understand how to do this and actually practice it and do it during this course. So we have a two-day online program. This is not pre-recorded, it's live, just like this Zoom call, where you're interacting directly with Joel and me and with each other. And in that, you're gonna work on the tricks, the tools, the techniques, the templates, everything behind what you just saw Joel do. He breaks it down step by step and makes it very unmysterious. So for example, he's gonna give you the number one way to open any talk or website that you could possibly do. It's the number one most effective communications technique there is. He's gonna talk about that. It's what the broadcasters do all the time. He's gonna talk about how you develop a signature, and you saw the beginning of this today, how you use your story, your personal story, to make what you do different from every other competitor out there. He's gonna talk about how you establish your, not just talk about, we're gonna work on this, your credibility. This is super important. You've got to be taken seriously by the people you're approaching, even if you're doing something new. Or anybody here uh, in transition to a new job, a new career, a new venture? Okay, most of us are in transition frequently these days. So you got to have a way to import your credibility from your past life to what you're doing now. And it's not hard to do, you just got to know how to do it. So we're gonna show you how to do that so that even if you're doing something for the first time ever and you have no results to point to, we're gonna show you how you can be completely credible to your audience. We're gonna talk about how you can show your humanity and your vulnerability so you're not only taken as an expert, but people actually like you. They fall in love with you. They wanna work with you and give yourself permission to, to be a real person in front of the room or on your website or in a video or wherever you may be. We're gonna practice that. We're gonna talk about skepticism and how to deal with the people out there who are gunning for you, or they have some real concerns about why they might wanna work with you. And how do you deal with that and actually welcome it and turn it around so that those hard questions and objections that people have become your allies. They become you know, ammunition for everything you wanna say. So this is, you know, just the tip of the iceberg of what we do in two days. It's a lot of stuff. And the, my favorite one of all is Joel gives you his signature model, which is something we haven't talked about at all yet, which is a way of weaving all this together in three minutes or less. In fact, he can do it in one minute or less. And if you practice, you could do it in one minute or less. To be able to be that succinct, that to the point, that you can nail this quickly right off the bat, so that people will want to hear more. Does that sound good? Would that be useful? This yes. is part of what we do, and I'm not gonna go into all of it, but how we do it is not, ex not only the way you saw it today. Joel works on interactively with people and does makeovers in front of the room. That is part of what we do. He demonstrates every technique and principle that we're illustrating. But then you do it, every one of you. We do this in a relatively small class, but it's done through exercises. It's done by practice, practicing again and again and again and getting feedback. So even on Zoom, you know, I don't know if you've experienced that, we can break you into small groups. We can have you interview each other. You can work in all different combinations, and it's a very cool thing to do this online. But we will do that. So you will be speaking for two days. 
not just taking notes and writing it down. We want you to leave the course far better communicators than you came in with, far better able to articulate what you do and move people. So that's the format of it. And this is for really literally anyone. You can be someone who's truly already expert in your field, or you can be somebody who's just starting out, or you can be somebody who's making a change. We have done this with people at the Pentagon. We've done this with CEOs. We've also done this work with people who are just entering the workforce for the first time and everything in between. So wherever level you're at, you apply it. And even if you don't know what you want to do next, you will find the skills useful and applicable at any point when you later discover what it is that you want to do. I'm sorry, who said what? Raise your hand. Somebody talking here? No worries, just go on. Sorry about that. It's just back okay. on this. So here are the dates, and Omar, if you can put this on. This is going to be take place in February on the 24th and 25th. It's a weekend, Saturday and Sunday. We go from 8 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock in the afternoon if you're on the Pacific time, or 10 to 6 if you're Central, or 11 to 7 if you're Eastern. And if you're in France, I'm sorry, you'll have to figure it out. It will probably be very late at night for you if you're, if you're in Europe. But that's when we do this. But, but the French accomplish a lot late at night. Oh, yes. I don't know if you heard what Joel just said. He said the French accomplish a lot late at night. This is true. All right, so this February 24th and 25th right now is the only course that we have scheduled like this. We don't do these very often anymore. So this is kind of our one-time one opportunity right now. The cost of this course, we've been doing this for three years now, I think it is. Uh, the cost is and has always been $1,495 for the two-day course. That's our cost. We really haven't changed it in three years. And this time... For a very special circumstance, which I'm about to tell you, we are going to make a change and that for you. And this is because of Omar. And I just want to say something about Omar. Omar has, we've known Omar now, how long has it been? It's probably been about 10 years, something like that. It's like seven, seven years or something. Seven like that. to 10 years. I'm bad with chronology. He goes back almost to the beginning of when we started doing these seminars. And Omar took our seminars. He's assisted at our seminars. He's coordinated our seminars. He has been there from our, for us from the beginning. And now he's launching his own new venture, which is why you all are here, thanks to Omar. And, he, and we're so proud of him, and we want to support him, and we really wanted to thank him. And we asked him what we could do. And he said, I want to provide a service for my people, meaning his people, at a really affordable rate, and if you want to pay it forward to me, then what you need to do is give it to them at a rate you've never done before. Give them a really special deal because that, that makes Omar's service look good. And so we said we would. And this is truly, and there's a lot of BS out there. I swear to God, I am not lying here. This is truly the only time we have done this. So we are going to change the cost of the course for you guys to $845, not $1,400 and $95, but $845. What is that, Omar, $650 discount? Yes. Is that right? Yes. That's for Omar. So if you are interested in doing this, you thank him, because that's, that's really for him. There's only one catch to this, which is that this offer will be good for the next five days, from now until Sunday. That's it, now until Sunday. So if this is something that you're interested in, what you need to do is register between now and Sunday. And the way to do that is you look in the uh, chat section over here on the right of your screen, your Zoom screen, and there's a link. And it's a link to Infopreneur Agency. Do you all see that in the chat section? If you, link, if you click on that, that will take you to a registration page. And there's a coupon code in there that's going to be up for five days and only for you. And that's what will give you the discounted rate. Um, I just heard that Ron Holt is on this call. Is Ron here? Where is he? Ron, oh, I see Joel Rabinowitz. Where is Ron? I'm here. You're here? Do we see your picture? No, and unfortunately, for some reason, you're not able to see my picture. I don't know why. <laughs> hey, Ron. Um, Hi. I, I didn't know you were here. Hello, Ron. Hi. Uh, 
everybody, I just want to ask Ron. I didn't know Ron was even going to be on this call, but Ron has done our program. And I was wondering, Ron, if there's anything you want to say about it. I'd be happy to. So I've actually done a couple of your, of your programs and it's nice to, surprise. I'm, I'm on the call. <laughs> so um, I've done the millionaire mouth program and I've also done two times really the video where I fly out to Nashville and you guys do videos for me. Yeah. So, I'm going to tell you about that in a second. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And so and, and anyway, the, the program that you're talking about right now is an amazing program. Uh, I really learned a lot from it. It really helped me define my messaging very well and it's an amazing program. So if people here on the call haven't done that, I would highly recommend doing it. And by the way, I'm not getting paid to say this. <laughs> they don't even know I'm on the call. It's a surprise. So this is just my way of paying back to Joel and Heidi all the great work that they've done for me. And that price that you are saying is actually true. It's, it's, it's greatly discounted. <laughs> so so any, anyway, I would highly re recommend doing this program. Okay. Thank you so much, Ron. Ron, I so appreciate that. And lots of love to you. It's great yeah, to hear thank you. Thank you. All right. Now I want to tell you one more thing. So bear with me because Ron made reference to this for just a few more seconds. We as presenters only offer two different programs. We don't have a laundry list of things that we do with people. We have two. One of them is Millionaire Mouth Online, and that's the foundation of all our work. It's, it's the essential starting point. The other program we do is something I'm gonna tell you very briefly. We call it the Nashville course. We live in Nashville and uh, we do it in Nashville. It's a live in-person event for only eight people. It's that small. It is our top of the line, VIP, super deluxe, hands-on, do it for you course. So while Millionaire Mouth Online is where you learn what's behind Joel's thinking, how does he come up with what he comes up with? You really learn the, the principles underlying everything and the tools. In Nashville, if you get to a point where you say, look, I'm ready to rock, I'm, I've got my business, I know what I'm doing, I've got my big book, I don't wanna learn how, I just want somebody to do it for me. That's Nashville. We will sit down with you for, Time before the course, first two days, it's a four day course. The first two days of the course, we work with you and seven other people, that's it. We're circulating one at a time in front of the room, working with Joel personally, and we get everything about your message nailed. We type it up for you even. We tell you your sound bites, we tell you your stories, we tell you the sequence, we tell you exactly how you're gonna talk about what you do. And then the next two days, we go into this super cool production studio in Nashville, which is state of the art. And we have four cameras set up, a whole video crew, makeup, hair, lights, camera, action. And we, Joel will do an interview with you on camera like the Today Show. And the next day, we'll do another camera with you where it's just you. It's a solo, as an interview with you that's a solo. And by that time, you are hot. You're good, you know exactly what you need to do and we guide you through everything, every step of the way and if you flub it, we just do the darn thing over again. It's no big deal. So we get two great interviews with you. You choose the one that you want and we edit them and then we send you a professional video with graphics and music and you know just everything that you would possibly want to look like a class act all the way and have this thing in the can nailed the way it should sound. So that's the Nashville course. And we also end with a party in our home. We love to invite you to our home and we celebrate and have a dinner. And it's a very intimate, high level group. It's also not a cheap course. It's $9,000 for this course, which includes the video. And if you want both videos, we can do that too. It's a little bit of an extra fee for that, but we, do, we give you what you need and what you want. Um, however, if that's, so if that's something that interests you, I want you to call me personally. We talk to everybody who wants to do that. So uh, Omar, you can put up uh, on the screen our contact information, if, if you, or in the chat, either way. If, if that's kind of not the main thing I want to talk about here, but that, if that interests you at all, I want to have a conversation, and Joel will have a conversation with you as well. Make sure there's a good fit, a good use of your hard-earned money, and that this will serve you now. And if you decide to register for Nashville, we still want you to do Millionaire Mouth Online because that is the best foundation for the whole thing. So you'll understand what we're doing and be able to recreate it for yourself later on. And as a bonus, 
we will apply the cost of millionaire math online to the cost of the Nashville course, which means instead of paying $9,000, we're going to take $845 away from that. So basically, you're getting the, Nash, uh, the millionaire math online for free. So back to this, to wrap it all up, folks, you know, that's what we're offering. Our recommendation, again, if, this is, if, if you're up to something big, do the work. Get your message right. Let us help you with this. There's nobody been better than Joel to do it. Did you have something you want to add? Start with. Yeah, we want everyone to start with Millionaire Math Online, whether you do Nashville or not. But if you do want to do Nashville, talk to us. It's in April. Um, the dates, and I can't remember what they are, but uh, I will send you it all. I'm sorry, folks, I have those days, but I don't remember what they are. They are, I don't have it here. I think it's around the, April 21st, somewhere in there. It's towards the end of the month. But talk to me, and I'll give you all the details of that. Okay, so before we wrap, anybody got any burning questions? All right, we are available. You'll see my information, that info at joelroberts.com comes directly to me. I wanna to talk to you if you've got questions, if you've got issues. Remember, you've got five days and that's it for the discount on Millionaire Math Online. And no matter what you do with us, we want you to start there. We want you to register for that. It will serve you well, I promise. Thank you, Ron, for your wonderful words. Omar, did you wanna wrap up? Thank you yes. all. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. share this with you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Joel. Please uh, let him know I said thank you. Uh, so you guys, in case you didn't, uh, you, you didn't know, I've been working with Joel like for, like he said, seven years. I've actually gone to this course about seven times or more. And the, the advanced course used to be a, a bigger group. Uh, now it's a smaller group. But I've been there probably like three times as well. Uh, and he gives you this workbook, you guys, the actual workbook. So, you know, you've seen him freestyle, you've seen him work with people individually, but there is, like he said, a science to this whole process. And it's very broken down, it's very simple to follow. I can't highly, I can't recommend it enough. It's really uh, been a huge transformation for myself and for my business. And I, I use it for my clients as well. I help them, uh, I do my best to, to help my clients the way Joel does. And it's totally transformed my business and my life. So I wanna, Again, recommend every single one of you. All of you need this. Um, and if you need to talk with Heidi or Joel, uh, the phone number is in the chat box. So write that down. If you need to arrange anything special or you have any questions or anything in additional, uh, reach out to them, email or call the office, okay? They're very welcome. Uh, you're, you're very welcome to call them at any time, okay? So um, you guys, I'm gonna, I wanna get hands, uh, some hands, you guys, uh, some uh, a round of applause for for uh, Heidi and Joel, you guys, I'm gonna unmute everyone. So let's do this. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. Right. Thank you. Guys. Thank I'll, you. I'll, uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks. Thank you, Omar. Thanks, Thank you. Omar. Thank you, Omar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.